know when someone tells you about a game they hate and they're like, yeah, it's the worst thing I've ever played and all you can think of is introducing them to what hyperbole is. Well, I had a similar experience with Soldier of Fortune Payback where I had a few Sunny Jims telling me it was the worst game ever made and I thought, come on, it can't be that bad. I mean, there's plenty of bad games out there that are still enjoyable to play because of how bad they are. I think a game like Rogue Warrior is a good example and I assume Soldier of Fortune Payback would be another classic example of this as well. So what did I do? Yeah, I bought it. Now this game got banned in Australia at the time for its violence and I thought at the very least that there might be some novelty there because of that. But holy shit was I wrong about this one. Soldier Fortune Payback may just be one of the worst games I've ever played. It's certainly one of the worst games made in the last decade, that's for sure. It's comparable to the type of trash that gets released on Steam under early access. It's a buggy, glitchy, ugly, unenjoyable, uninspired, generic piece of shit. And the only redeeming feature is that it's over so quickly. It was developed by a group called Cauldron who developed Chaser, another lesser known FPS game from the early 2000s that has a reputation for being so bad that it's good, but the same can't be said about Payback. I have no idea why this game has the Soldier of Fortune title for starters, it has nothing to do with the other game aside from the organisation you work for being called The Shop. Your character is a guy named Mason, the supposed mercenary, gun for hire or whatever you want to call him, but whereas John Mullins in the prior games was a pretty neutral kind of guy, Mason is just a bit of a psychopath. Now, quit stalling me. Spill your guts, Bashar, or I'm gonna make a cave painting out of your fucking brains. The voice acting is so horrendously bad, and the whole thing feels like a first draft that's just been whipped out in a matter of hours. The story, from what I could tell, is that you're traveling the world to stop an arms dealer, but the plot is so muddled and confusing, it's hard to tell what's going on. Mason mentioned something about Hong Kong to one of the game's antagonists, but I had no idea what he was referring to. Most of the dialogue is so awful and painful to listen to, and to make matters worse, you can't even skip the cinematics. Sorry, sweetheart, but this isn't gonna work out. I'm in a hurry, and I'm far too sober for this. Alright, I'll admit that's pretty funny. I mean, this chick makes the hookers in the pole position club look like they've been rendered with the Unreal 4 engine. You'll probably notice by now just how ugly the game looks, and yes, it truly does look ugly. Even on the PC, when the visuals are maxed out, it often looks like something you'd see on the PlayStation 2. There's a bug where if you don't have V-Sync enabled, you can't even hit enemies due to some kind of hitbox error, and it's literally unplayable unless you've installed the latest patch. But even still, the game just looks so boring and flat. I mean, textures aren't very detailed, there's a lot of bloom to try and mask how crappy everything looks, and it's just really subpar. The jungle areas look half decent, I'll admit, with some nice lighting, but keeping in mind this is the year the Crytek engine was unleashed on the world, it makes Soldier Fortune Payback just look like crap. There's often literally one or two enemy character models per level and you'll just be mowing down waves and waves of these dumb assholes as they run towards your muzzle flash like moss to a flame. These are the most generic enemy types you're ever gonna see. It's either Middle Eastern terrorists, Russians and all that kind of thing and there's just an absolute abundance of these brain dead idiots to kill. Soldier Fortune Payback seems like it's trying to follow suit with the other games, keeping the violence excessive at all times, and yet the gore system in this game is somehow inferior to its predecessors. In the old games, you could fire at someone and take them apart piece by piece, and it felt somewhat believable despite being really over the top. In Payback, there's still location-based damage to an extent, like you can pull off groin and neck shots for instance, but it's the way the damage is displayed on their character models that just looks really bizarre. Like when you're shooting at an enemy, it's common to see entire body parts just fall off after they're hit by gunfire. Like their whole arm or leg is just going to fall off like they're a figurine or something. Shoot them in the head for instance, and the head will literally just evaporate into thin air. There's no exit wound or anything like that, the head will just vanish. It's stupid as hell. It's kind of funny initially, then it just becomes embarrassing. I mean, think about it, a game made in 2001 has more realistic and developed gore than a game made in 2007. Speaking of stupid as hell, there's the enemy AI. Now this is basic in the sense that they're either running around shooting at you or standing still and shooting at you. They're able to take cover and pop out methodically to fire at you and they will run away from grenades if you throw one at their feet, but they're utterly brain dead otherwise. On the flip side, these shitheads practically never miss and Soldier Fortune Payback ends up joining the ranks of the multitude of these sort of half-assed modern warfare inspired shooting games where you have the basic regenerating health bar and loads of hit scanning soldier type enemies. At the end of almost every level, you'll have to take on a boss fight, which is just an enemy with a ridiculous amount of health points that can survive a couple hundred bullets to the face. 
often to make things more unfair, these guys are given a grenade launcher or an RPG, which is able to kill you in a single hit. At the start of each mission, there's a weapon loadout screen where you can select from a few different categories and customize the guns with attachments and all that stuff, but this is such a redundant mechanic. Simply because it doesn't matter what type of gun you use, you're gonna have to switch to whatever weapon the enemy is using in that level. Otherwise, you'll just run out of ammo. Seeing as in most levels, the enemies are always using AK-47s, it kind of removes any semblance of experimentation or actual customization with shooting. I think there's a couple of moments when you come across ammo boxes which will stock you back up, but holy hell, these were rare. None of the weapons have any kind of recoil or sense of weight when firing them. As long as you're aiming down the sights or down a scope, you can just hold down the fire button until the magazine is empty. Like a P90, for instance, seemed to handle about the same from the same distance as did an M16. There's all these stats for damage and accuracy, but they don't seem to make that much of a difference. And at times, it doesn't even feel like you're firing a weapon at all. There's that little recoil. When you're hit by enemies, there's also very little notification that you're taking damage, aside from the edges of the screen slowly turning red as you're getting closer and closer to death. The way you take damage in this game is extremely bizarre. You can survive an entire magazine from an assault rifle, and yet enemies are able to kill you by whacking you with the butt of their weapon like twice. Bullshit. There's certain instances when you'll just die instantly without any idea of what the hell hit you, and I can only assume these moments are glitches. The frustration compounded further by the idiotic checkpoint system that'll often force you to replay the last 10 minutes all over again. The last level of the game has enemies with shotguns, and you'll pretty much just turn a corner, then be dead before you even realize you're getting shot at. Like I said earlier, the only redeeming feature is that the whole thing's over really quickly. You in for big disappointment, American. Even though I suffered from a multitude of deaths throughout the campaign, it still only lasted like two to three hours. Thanks a bunch, pal. I can't really see any reason why you'd want to replay it either. I mean, there's no unlockables or anything like that, and the only other mode on offer is the multiplayer, which is absolutely dead, and rightfully so. Soldier Fortune Payback is one of those rare times when I've been playing a video game and actually started to feel remorse for what I'm doing, like there's so many more productive things I could be doing right now than playing this abomination. The fact it shares its name with one of the greatest of the old school shooters is a travesty, and maybe the fact they banned this thing where I live was kind of a blessing in disguise. I would not recommend this to anyone. Not on a train, not in a tree, not in a car, cauldron, let me be. I hope someone at least got that reference.